But I do believe that God wants to speak to us this morning, and if we'll just set aside some time today and let God move, let God speak to us today, amen, uh, God will speak to us this morning. Amen. So I'm excited, amen, to go into the word of the Lord, and uh, thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity today. Amen. Well, why don't you stand with me as we read the word of God, and I, uh, there's no projector in the back, so I can't see when the scriptures come up, so I'm just going to keep on going for time's sake, so uh, you'll just, he'll just catch up with me. If I go a little too fast, that's okay. So we're going to start in uh, Exodus chapter 19, and uh, starting at verse 16, it says, Then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain, and the sound of a trumpet was very loud, so that all the people who were in camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace. The whole mountain quaked greatly, and when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and, and became louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him by voice, and the Lord came down upon the Mount Sinai. And the top, on the top of the mountain. And the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. In verse 20, chapter 20, verse 18, it says, Now all the people witnessed the thunderings and the lightning, flashes, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. Then they said to Moses, You spoke with us, and we will hear you. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Praise God. Amen. I wonder if you would just pray with me and pray for me that my mind, amen, would be in tune with the voice of God today. Amen. And let's pray that our hearts, amen, would receive what God has for us today. Amen. God, we love you this morning. Oh, Lord, I feel your presence in this room today, God. I know that you're here, God. And amen, I believe you've given me the word to speak to us today, God, to encourage, amen, your people, God. I pray that your word would roll through this house today. Touch every heart and every mind in this place, God. Amen. I pray let the word of God do what it it's called to do today, God, to touch the heart of man, oh God, and bring it to its proper place, Lord. Amen. I pray that you would touch my mind, Lord, and help me to hear your voice this morning, God. Amen. Anoint me to preach your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Amen. I was... Uh, Given Sister Ginger kettled in my title, and uh, she's kind of picking on me a little bit. She says, you know, I'm going to call you the Disney preacher. And uh, so just kind of funny. Uh, I don't do these things on purpose. They just kind of settle in my mind, and I don't know where they come from. But uh, we're going to talk about Snow White for just a second. And I haven't given you my title yet. I know. Just wait. And... Uh, so, you guys know the story of Snow, Snow White. I actually had to go back and read it because I had Cinderella and Snow White mixed up, okay? <laughs> so, and uh, so the story goes there is a, uh, a beautiful queen who had a magic mirror. And uh, obviously, as the story goes, you find out that she had a problem with vanity. She would look in the mirror and she would say, magic mirror in my hand, who is the fairest in the land? Or maybe you've heard it said, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? And the mirror would always reply back, you are my queen. Or it would say, my queen, you are the fairest in the land. And uh, you f in the story, you know, the story goes that there was, a, that there was a daughter, a stepdaughter to the queen, and she grew up to become very fair and very beautiful. And the time came when she asked the mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? And the, the mirror would reply, well, you are fair, it's very true, but Snow White is much fairer than you. And, uh, well, whatever it was, that voice that came out of the mirror, it drove the queen nuts. And eventually she, she you know, the story, she tried to kill Snow White three times. And the final time she ended up poisoning an apple and she fell asleep and then you know, she got kissed by her handsome prince, and she lived on to be 
happily ever after with her, with her prince. So I'd like to preach to you for a little bit this morning with the subject, mirror, mirror. <laughs> Amen. So, you need a little prop if you're going to preach something like this. So I brought myself a little mirror. And uh, we're going to set this guy up right here. Praise God. So the bottom line in the story here is the queen got upset when she looked into the mirror and she didn't like what the mirror told her. And so, of course, someone has to die, right, in the story, Snow White, right? But my question to you is how many of you can identify with that statement? When I look into the mirror, I don't like what I see. You know, they say that uh, when a woman looks into a mirror, she looks for her flaws. She looks for the things that need to be corrected, the, you know, the problems that, you know, that she sees in the mirror. And they, they say that when a man looks into a mirror, the man looks for, you know, all the good things that he sees. You know, he's, you know, he's, you know. <laughs> you're right. That's what they say, right? So... So I wanna, I'm just going to do a little poll here today, and I just want you to think about yourself, okay? When you look into a mirror, do you find yourself looking for the flaws? Are you, you know, look, I'm looking in the mirror, and you know, I, I, I'm always looking at my flaws, it seems. I'm, oh, man, I got bags under my eyes, and I look in the mirror, and I'm like, man, I got a big nose. And, uh, you know, there's, there's times I don't even like to look in the mirror. I'd rather just cover the thing up because I don't want to know what I look like. And I, you know, I thank God I'm already married. She's stuck with me, whether she likes it or not, right? So, um, you know, hopefully I, she, I look good to her. That's the only thing I need to happen, right? But... You know, so just by a show of hands here today, when you mostly, okay, look in the mirror, do you find yourself mostly looking at your flaws and trying to fix your flaws? How many of you would identify with that today? Okay, and how about the other way? How many of you, when you look in the mirror, and there's nothing wrong with this, when you look in the mirror, you're looking at, oh, look at that, that looks nice. I like the way that looks. Okay, so there, <laughs> there are a couple. Okay, good, all right. Okay, good. All right. Now, I think it goes either way, right, for most of us, but I would say there's about 70% of us here in the room that identify with the former that, you know, when I look in the mirror, I'm really not happy with what I see, right? And, uh, and, and I would say that there's times when we're probably like, hey, I'm, I'm looking pretty good. Look at that. Yeah. Right? All right. Praise God. So, amen, my title this morning is Mirror, Mirror. So, when we come into the presence of a holy God, and because we don't like what we see in the mirror, we can often find ourselves waiting for God to strike us with lightning. And I believe in Exodus, if you know the story here, God has called the children of Israel out of Egypt with a mighty hand. He, he, he poured out the plagues on Egypt. He struck them down. I mean, he took every last ounce of strength out of Egypt they had by the time they got out of there. And uh, they made it across the Red Sea. And now they're in the desert. And, and God has called Moses, you know, it's time to have a meeting. And so he calls the children of Israel out and he says, Moses, I want you to come up the mountain and I'm going to talk to you. And, and man, and God's, you know, he's giving a show of strength here. He's saying, Moses, I want them to know that I'm going to be talking with you. And so he says, oh, I'm going to lay it on a little thick. I'm going to give it a little heavy. And, and so he begins to thunder and smoke and lightning. And, and all the people come out and they see the presence of God on the mountain. And because of what they see in the mirror, the problems that they see and identify in their own life, Amen. I believe the people are waiting for God to strike them down. The flaws, they are waiting for God to destroy them. Because of this thought, I am not good enough. 
Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? And the mirror says back to you, it's not you. It's not you. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 6, it says, And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. God was trying to call them up. He was trying to call them out. He was trying to separate them. He was trying to give them something they could look at, something they could say, man, God is awesome. Look at how powerful God is. Hallelujah. But they couldn't get past the reflection they saw in the mirror when it came to the holiness of God. All they could see was judgment. Praise God. You know, I don't know about you, but uh, how many of you enjoy a good thunderstorm? I love a good thunderstorm, man. If I could, I'd go sit out, amen, inside that thunderstorm and wave across my two iron. I'm just kidding if you know that. I'm just kidding if you know that. I'm just kidding. Praise God. Amen. You know why I love it? Now, I know people who are just, when the thunder begins to roll and there's that loud boom and just the, the awesome power that is in a thunderstorm. There are people that are just petrified of, of that, the feeling and the static in the air. And just, they're just, there's people that are afraid of it. And you know, I really, you know, as this message, you know, just kind of dawning on me and hitting me, you know, I'm not afraid of a good thunderstorm because I'm not waiting for God to, to judge me. I'm not waiting for God to punish me. I'm looking at the awesome power of God. Amen. And so there's some things that need to change in our mind when we look in the mirror. There are some things that we need to see that, you know, maybe things aren't how they appear in the mirror. Maybe that mirror is lying to me today. Praise God. Maybe the mirror is trying to tell you that you're not good enough to come into the presence of a holy God. Amen. But it seems, or maybe that mirror is just telling you you're not good enough. You know, we can apply this to our life. Maybe you're not good enough at your job. That's what the mirror is telling you. Maybe you don't look good enough to, to you know, do whatever. And, you know, my hair is messed up. And, you know, I just, I, man, I, I don't like the way my eyes look. You know, this, you know, does this make my butt look big? You know, and we have those, you know, we're always looking at our flaws, Amen. And you know, it seems that this lie that the mirror has been telling us has been going on since the day man, well, since Adam and Eve. It seems that from the very beginning, we have been lied to by the enemy that you aren't good enough. And I hate to tell you today, but we all have a problem believing that lie today. Even I myself find myself, you know, even with this message, preaching outside of my comfort zone because there are many times where I don't feel like I'm adequate. I don't feel like I'm able to come into the presence of God. And, and I'm just sometimes I'm waiting for God to judge me. And every time I come into his presence, he's come to give me life. He's come to refill me with a Holy Ghost. He's, he's come to assure me that I'm still his child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hoping to change the way you look at yourself in the mirror today by the help of the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, even Adam and Eve, those two that were created by the very hand of God, believed that they were not good enough. In Genesis chapter 3, in verse 4, it says, Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. Satan was able to convince Eve that she wasn't good enough. I know you're handcrafted by God, but you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not like God. And she bought into it. When she looked at the tree, she says, oh, 
I'm not good enough. Well, if I eat this, I will be smarter. If I do that, I will be prettier. If I, you know, if I wear this, I'll be better. Those lies are still being whispered in the ears of men and women today. But can I tell every one of you today that you were made in God's image. Every one of us, hallelujah, was made in God's image. Now, I'm not saying we don't have flaws. Very clearly, if you look, you see there are flaws. Amen. We are not perfect. I'm not saying we don't lack sin. We don't lack problems. We don't lack trials. We don't lack trouble. I know we do, but I want you to take that for a moment and just put it aside for just a second here and see what God wants to tell you. Amen. We are not a perfect people. I understand that. And I, if you could understand, if you could, I, I don't know how to relate this to you, but I don't believe today we are what God originally created us to be. Amen. When you go back to creation, you'll find today we're five foot nine average height. I'm average. Okay. I'm just average. Oh, mirror. Why am I just average? <laughs> Praise God. But I don't believe today that we are what God intended for us to be. Sin has corrupted us. Sin has taken a toll on us. It has taken a toll on the world, on, the, on our surroundings. And it has affected us. God did not create us to be sickly. He created us perfect. In Genesis chapter 1, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. He made him male and female. He created them. Amen. We were created to be the friend of God. Well, you say, well, how do you know that? Where do you get that from the scripture? Well, let me ask you a question. You have friends? What do you look for in a friend? You look for commonalities, things that you share in interest and things that you can talk about and laugh about. Those are things that when you gather with your friends, those are the kind of things you do. Well, God created us, first of all, he created us in his likeness, in his image. He gave us commonality. He gave us his image likeness. He gave us dominion over the earth. He gave us five senses so we could communicate. And I ain't got time today to go into all of that, but I want you to just think about this for a second. He gave us dominion over the earth. Now I know there are dinosaurs that are 20 feet tall, right? Does this little five foot nine think he's going to have dominion over all of that? What I'm trying to tell you is we are fallen creatures. But God understands all of that. God is still in Genesis chapter 1. He still knows what he created. Amen. And today we're, 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 we've come a long way. Amen. God sees our flaws. He knows our flaws. He knows how far we've come. But I believe God still sees the original creation and says, I'm going to put it back in place. Praise God. He created us perfect until, amen, until someone believed they weren't perfect. Until someone believed they weren't good enough. We are not what we used to be. God created us perfect. He created us intelligent. He gave us dominance. We lived to be a thousand years. And we were the children of God. And now I look in the mirror and I'm critical of my five foot nine man that I am that's staring back at me with flaws, who gets sick, who gets tired, who's got gray hair. Thank you for pouring that out, Brother Gilmore. <laughs> I see my vain and sinful ways staring back at me when I look in the mirror and I think, oh God, how could you possibly love a person like me? How could you possibly like that image of what is in the mirror, God? Amen. But God, God loves us. You see, I look in the mirror and I don't like what I see. I don't like the way that man looks. And I look at him and I say, man, you're a loser. And I, again, I, sometimes I don't even want to look in the mirror. But the enemy is still telling us today, wow, you could be like them. You could be like him. 
I mean, you don't like the way you look, it's okay. You can look like that person. You can look like this magazine. You can look like that person. Or maybe if you began to talk, you could talk like that person. Who would like to be like Mike? Anybody get that? as a 90s joke, but that's all right. You see, we still look and we say, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Well, have you checked your Facebook account? Have you checked your Twitter or your Instagram? You're not as good as that person on Facebook. You're not as good as that person on Instagram. Oh, who's, what about our church? Our, look at that church. How come our church can't be like that church? How come that man or woman can't be like that man or woman? Oh, we're always trying to measure up to what we see somebody else is going to be. Amen. The lies of the enemy are telling you that you're not good enough. Hallelujah. But can I tell you today that every church has problems? Every person has problems. Every person looks in the mirror and says, there's flaws there. The thing they don't show you on Facebook is all the tears, all the sad times. They don't post those on Facebook. Amen. They don't post the times where they've had an argument and they've come to church and they, it takes God to put it all back together. When we look, all we see is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. But we didn't know that there was a serious situation that God had to deal with in that church. Praise God. Uh, sometimes we look in the mirror and the mirror, mirror says, you're not as good as that person. You'll never measure up to that church. You'll never measure up to what God is doing in their life. Amen. But I'm here to tell you today that the devil is still a liar. Amen. I'm going to say it again. The devil is still a liar. Hallelujah. God loves you. God sees you different than how you see yourself today. Amen. This whole time, God has been waiting for a meeting with you. Amen. I'm going to say it again. This whole time, God has been waiting for a meeting with you. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to tell you today that God loves you. In fact, you are so important to him. You are still important to him. Amen. I hope you catch this. He gave himself a human body that stinks, that sweats, that has flaws, flesh, a human body, and died to take the place of the sinful man that you and I see in the mirror. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He does not want you to see the old man that you see in the mirror. He wants you to see a new creation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I believe it today. Can we just say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, God. Praise your name, God. Praise your name, God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I wish today somebody could look into the mirror and see what God sees. Amen. So that when you say mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? And you look and you see your flaws, your problems. Amen. You see what God sees you to be. Amen. And it ain't the same person that you actually see. It's a new creature. Amen. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, he, the new has come. Amen. I tell you, sometimes this is beyond my own faith that he still loves me, that he still cares for me, that I am still the one that he died for, that I am still the, the, the one that he wants to have a relationship with. Amen. There are days when I come into his presence 
Amen. And I feel so down. I'm tired. Maybe it's, and I'm not necessarily talking about sin here. I'm just talking about being human. Amen. And just being tired. And I don't want to do it, God. I want to just sit at home. I don't want to go out. I don't want to talk to nobody. Just leave me alone. And when I come into the presence of God, amen, God has always been faithful to me to say, God, Daniel, I love you. And I'm going to refill you with a Holy Ghost. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There are times that I go into my prayer closet, amen, and I just go talk to God. And and sometimes I don't feel nothing. And it's like, God, do you still love me? And God shows up and he begins to wrap his loving arms around me. He says, you're still my precious son. You're still my precious son. I still love you. Hallelujah. You say, well, how do you know God loves me? You see, the Bible says in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But can I tell you that it's not a plural thing. It's not a he died for everybody, not just you. No, it's he died for you, specifically for you, individually. In Luke chapter 15 and verse 3, so he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that one which is lost until he finds it? Now listen to this. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder. He carries you, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Hallelujah. I'm telling you that all of heaven rejoices. Hallelujah. When your relationship with God is restored. Hallelujah. I'm going to say that again. All of heaven rejoices when your relationship with God is restored. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And just like in Exodus, when God brought them out of Egypt, he didn't just want to bring them out. He wanted to bring them up. He wanted to bring them to a place closer to himself. Amen. He wanted to separate them from the rest of the world. And amen. I'm not going into all that today, but amen. God wants to do more than just bring you out. He wants to call you up. Hallelujah. Closer to himself. Amen. In John chapter 1 and verse 12. Now, I want you to hear how God sees you. Amen. How God sees you. In John chapter 1 verse 12, it says, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to be called or to become the children of God. Amen. Hallelujah. He wants to call you his child. Amen. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, it says, But you, everybody say me. Me. Amen. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. I'm telling you, it's time to look at the mirror, the lies of the enemy, and tell that mirror to be quiet. I don't care your opinion. You keep it to yourself. Amen. I am a child of God. Amen. I'm a royal priesthood. Amen. I belong to a holy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sometimes we look in the mirror and we say, you know what? I'm not good enough. Amen. So I need to dress a certain way. Maybe if I do this, I will look a certain part. Amen. But the word of God says, be ye holy. Amen. It's time that we tell the, the mirror to shut up. I'm not listening to your lies anymore. Amen. And there comes a time where we have to put some be into our life. Amen. Some doing. Amen. So be ye holy. Amen. For I am holy, says the Lord. Hallelujah. God is applying his holiness to us. Amen. And there has to come a time where we look in the mirror and say, you know what? I'm not looking like everybody else. Amen. I'm going to be 
holy. I'm going to be what God wants me to be. Amen. And that is according to his word. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. In Galatians chapter 3, 26 through 28, it says, For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Let that sink in. Oh, you know you were baptized, but did you forget, amen, that you are still a child of God if you have put on Christ? Amen. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. In Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm telling you today, God doesn't see you the way you see yourself. Amen. When you look in the mirror, God has a different image for you. Amen. That mirror doesn't reply back with you're flawed. I see failure. I see strife. I see struggle. God says, I see my son. Amen. I see the one I love. I see the one I died for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I know that God is dealing with somebody here today. Amen. The Bible says if you have put on Christ. Well, how do you put on Christ? Amen. If you have not been baptized today, what a better day to put on Christ. Amen. And God wants to wash all of those flaws away. Amen. God wants to change you. Amen. In accordance with Acts 2 and 38. Then Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm closing right now. Praise God. I told you I wouldn't be long. Amen. He wants to put that whole mess of your flaws, all those things that you see in the mirror, and he wants to put them on Christ. Amen. He wants you to be called his son and his daughter today. Amen. And if you are already baptized in Jesus' name, amen, I would to God that you would quit believing the lies of the enemy this morning that says you're not good enough. Amen. God took all those imperfections and he put them on Calvary. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so thankful that my rejoicing is not in the struggles that I have today. My rejoicing, my hope is for the new hope that he gives me, the future hope that I don't yet see. Amen. Because the Bible says that we shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. God, amen, will change this corruptible body into an incorruptible body. Hallelujah. And I look forward to that day. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, Jesus. Amen. I got time. I'm going to read this this morning. Romans chapter 8. I would, I would just have you read the whole eighth chapter if you want to know how God feels about this whole business. But, I mean, this is a little lengthy, but, amen, I just want you to hear what God is saying to us today. And I'm going to start in verse 18. It says, For I considering consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. That's you. For the cre creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the Spirit, even ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is in that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Praise God. Amen. I'm not going to read the whole thing. The whole thing is just so awesome. Let me skip down. 
What then shall we say to these things? For if God is for us, who can be against us? Who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all? How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring charge against God's elect? Amen. We got to quit lying, listening to the lies of the enemy. It is God who justifies Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Praise God. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. It is written, for you, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we try to view God through what we see in the mirror. Our faults, our failures, amen, which bring judgment. But if we could see through what God sees, it's not his judgment that's coming. It's his presence that's coming to visit with you. Hallelujah.